Hi everyone, this is Fox, and this is the second video in my Sony Vegas tutorial series. The first one was an overview of the whole program, and this is a look at the trimmer and timeline windows. And the reason we look at those together is because they work in tandem. There's a lot of things that you want to do in the trimmer window that you could do in the timeline, but would get messy. And without the timeline, the trimmer window is virtually useless. Now to show you how that trimmer window works, we'll have to drag a clip into it and open it up in there. Remember, I have these uh, little clip previews turned on. I recommend doing that unless you have a slower computer. Let's go ahead and grab this goose right there, and then we'll put an out point right after he exits the frame. Your in and your out points are the I and O keys, respectively. I for input, or in point, and O for out point. Now that you have that selected, you can hit this icon to add, or you can hit the A button. I'm going to control Z. You can hit A for add, and it adds it from the cursor point. Watch this, though. Be careful. Ah, it only adds it from where this cursor is, so wherever the cursor is, it'll add it, even if it overlaps other videos. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right. And we're going to get rid of those in and out points on our timeline, and we're going to put the cursor back where it was. There we go. Okay, let's grab another clip, drag it into the trimmer, and then grab two arbitrary points. I for that point, and uh, let's see. O for this point, right before I, I change what I'm looking at with the video. A to add it, and let's do that again with this one. How about right there, our end point, and right towards the end before my camera starts moving. O for out point, add it, there we go. Now, let me show you why you don't want to use the timeline to work with all your clips. Let's say, for example, you have one clip that's down here, okay. All right, now ooh, look at that. That's a long clip. Let's go ahead and zoom so we can see the entire clip. Now let's say you have clips to the left and to the right of this thing, okay? Now you want only a portion of this clip, so what you could do is sort of drag it around your timeline and try not to bump into other clips and then drag it down and try to find the specific point that you want in it. And, but the problem is that when you're doing this, if there's clips on the other side of your time or of your clip that you're working with, then watch what happens. As you're working with it, you end up having to drag clips back and forth to match, and that could get really annoying if there's a lot of clips on your timeline. So let's move that back and drag that out a bit, and let's delete that and show you how to do this a better way. Drag it into your trimmer window. It was already there. And I want the point where the gentleman in black begins to walk over the bridge. Okay. See? Right there. See this gentleman in black? He's walking over the bridge there. I'm using the arrow keys to go back and forth. All right, right before he enters, I'll hit I for my end point, and right after he exits, I'll hit O for my out point, and then I'll make sure my cursor's in the right spot, and hit A. And there we go. A much cleaner and uh, easier way to edit. Now let's say I've changed my mind. I want to make this longer before he enters the frame, and I want to make it longer after he exits the frame. There's two ways to do that. You could drag it out, and then you could just um, drag the edges to extend the beginning and end of the clip, or you can undo that, delete that, come up here and drag the in and out points to wherever you want them to go. And hit A again to add. Alright, great. So now what's up next is, let's take a look at how to do um, a few things to change our clips in the timeline. This is stuff you can't do in Final Cut Pro or Avid Media Composer, at least not the versions I've used. Watch, this is really neat. I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see a little more of what's going on. The most common way to start a clip or start a video is to fade it in. You can grab the upper left corner of a clip when you see that right angle and then you can just drag and you're fading it in. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute Fox, you, you can't get an a, a, uh, accurate fade with the audio in the video if you're dragging randomly and you're just eyeballing it. That's true, so you can put your cursor where you want the fade to stop and then you can snap the audio and the video to that spot. There we go. And let's do that at the end too. And then we got a fade in and we have a fade out. Watch this. Fades in. Great. And watch this. Fades out. Awesome. Now let's let's learn a bit about how you can navigate using the keyboard rather than the mouse so you can avoid getting carpal tunnel. Hit the space bar. You can watch. Hit the space bar again. It goes back to where it started. Hit the space bar. And you can watch what you did. So just do that over and over again until you're sure that the look is what you want. All right, and that's exactly what we want. Okay. Awesome. 
Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and add a few tracks. Now you can do that by right clicking over here and choosing add video or add audio track. Now why would you want to add an audio track? Watch, I'll show you. Click your top audio track, we're going to name it text so you know what we're doing. Our other track we're going to name main. Our text track is selected, we go to media generators, we go up to text and then we go to sample text from soft shadow. Drag that down here, great, and then change it to oops, stone bridge. Go to effects, I like to turn on the outline and give it a little bit of width. Okay, now check that out. We have a title, but it looks a little harsh, it just appears, so let's drag the corners to make it fade in, and drag the other corner to make it fade out. See, that looks great, it fades in, and let's go over here, and it fades out. Great, isn't it? All right. So let's look at how to work with audio. We'll do more of that later, but just to show you, you can come over here and drag the slider on your audio tracks, and it makes it either softer or louder. Double click it to return it to zero. Zero does not mean no volume. Zero means your base volume that the audio started at. And remember, when you're playing something, you can look up here in the corner if you have your mixer turned on, and you can see if your audio is going into the red zone and blowing out and losing quality. All right, next, if you want to do a voiceover, create an audio track. Let me show you how to do that by, let me see, I'm going to delete this track here. Right click, insert audio track. Great. We're going to call it voice for voiceover. And then with it selected, what I'm going to do is go over here and click this arm for record. Ah, now it's picking up my voice in the microphone. You need to have a microphone connected or one in your laptop. Come down here and you can click this button to record and it'll start recording. Watch. You ready? Hello, this is Fox, and this is my Sony Vegas tutorial. And then I can stop it and save it. And there we go, we've got it. Hello, this is Fox, and this is my Sony Vegas tutorial. And I just did a voiceover, so let's delete that. We don't want that anymore. We can get rid of that entire track by hitting the delete key. Next up is a really neat feature. Okay, this is uh, something that's available in most uh, NLEs, your non-linear editing programs, but um, if you don't know how it works, it can be confusing. Ripple. If you turn on auto rippling, um, I think it's more useful. Watch. Watch what happens here. Say, for example, I want to change this clip. I don't want this clip anymore. I want something else instead. So I could delete it, or I could decide I just don't want anything here. I want to move this clip and this clip side by side. So I take this one, put the hit the delete key. Uh oh. Well, I can. Uh <laughs> Well, look at this. Now I have to drag each clip manually over. That's not hard when there's only two. Oh, now I got to drag this one back. But if you have a lot of clips on your timeline, that could get really annoying. So here's how you can do it. You've deleted your clip, right? Well, let's undo that delete. Come up here and hit Auto Ripple. Now watch what happens when I delete it this time. It moved everything over. Okay. If you un, well, let's see but it didn't move over the top so you gotta be aware of what's going on with that let's see if we can do this control Z and delete that oh, we didn't want that control Z select just this and delete and it auto ripples all the video clips great okay so now we know how that works you gotta be careful about your other video clips uh, in addition to that one I want to show you one last feature and that is the control dragging to change the time okay so let's go ahead and tighten this edit or this clip up a bit right before he enters the frame. And you see how the auto ripple causes it to uh, snap back. And let's pull it back right as he exits the frame. Okay, there we are. So I decided I want to speed this clip up. I want him to walk over that stone bridge really quickly. Click and hold the control click. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk today hold the control key and click the edge of this video clip and then drag it and you'll see it sort of makes this like compressed spring image and watch this now oh he goes over real fast and you can do the opposite by dragging it out further and he'll walk over that bridge slowly you have to be careful it changes the audio too so if someone's talking it'll sound very strange alright that's about all we have time for today thank you for watching I'll see you in the next tutorial my name's Fox